Hi everyone, welcome back to GameMakerCast, it's Mickey, and in this video, we're going to be looking at how to implement a simplistic pause system. The system will not be using a surface or deactivating objects, as that can sometimes lead into issues. Instead, we're going to be taking a simple state machine approach. Now, if you're not familiar with state machines, take a look at the video in the description or below, as I created one for the official GameMaker channel. Now, the game that we have currently running in the background, I'm using a wide variety of things. Our player is using a step event to move around, our enemies have built-in timers, and the bullets are using the built-in speed. We're going to be building a system that's going to be able to handle all of this and more. Switching over to GameMaker, I've already created a script file that holds the state of my game. You can see that we have a running state, pause state, and upgrading state. I'm just going to be dealing with the two states for now. Now, what I like to do in all of my games, I have an initialization room that also includes an initialization object. This object is responsible for loading defaults or loading saved data. But for now, what I want to do is use a default called global.gameState, and I'm going to set it to the game state running. So this can be accessed all throughout my project. Now, in my game, I also have a pause manager object. This is going to be responsible for our state machine and handling of the objects. For now, let's just go to the step event and listen for the escape key. Now, if our game state is in running, then we're just going to switch it to the pause state. Otherwise, if we're in the state of pause, then let's switch it back to running. Now, inside our player, let's open up the step event and create a small if statement to check if we are in the pause state or not. If we are in the pause state, then we want to return early. This means that everything underneath the return statement is not going to be executed, thus pausing our player. Let's copy and paste this into the enemy object as well. Now, when we run our game, you can see that when I pause the game, my player stops moving, but our enemies continue firing and our bullets are continuously moving. And that's because they're using the built-in variables. So let's close our game and handle this in the object pause manager. In the create event, we'll create two new arrays. We're gonna create one for alarms and one for speed. Now to make things simple on ourselves, we're going to create two new functions. Our first function is going to be called add alarm, and it's going to accept an instance, an alarm index, and then an alarm value. All we're going to do is push into the alarm array. We're going to push the struct that has the same variables. And if you haven't seen this syntax before, it's just a shorthand of what you would see here on my screen. Now, the final thing that we need to do is actually stop the alarm from firing. So for this specific instance, we'll set the alarm and its index to negative one. Now we can copy and paste this function below and we can change the name as well as we only accept the instance and the value. And then we'll push into the correct array and only use the variables that we need. Instead of stopping the alarm from firing, we'll set the speed to zero. Now in the object pause, let's also go to the step event and we're going to have to capture all these entities in order to pause them. First, we'll work on when we pause our game. We need to look at all the instances in our room. We can do this with a simple loop. All we have to do is set an index and make sure the index is less than the instance count. Now for grabbing these specific instance, we're going to be using instance underscore get underscore ID, and then pass in the ID that we're looking for, and in this case, it would be the index. This will give us every instance that is active in our room. Now, we need to loop through all of the default alarms, which is zero from nine, and we can do this with another for loop. Now, for each of the alarms, let's store the value for that specific index. Now, let's check the value to see if it's greater or equal to zero, and if it is, then we're going to store that instance alarm into our function by using add alarm. Again, we'll pass the instance, the alarm index, and the alarm value. Now, once we've finished with checking the alarms, we can also check the speed. We can see if the speed is greater than zero, and if it is, we'll call our add speed function. Now we can test this by running our game and I can move around and as soon as I hit the escape key, everything pauses. If I hit my escape key one more time, I can move my player, my enemies will move, but the alarms don't fire and the bullets don't move. So when we unpause our game, we need to loop through all of our arrays. First, we're gonna start off with the array alarms. Now the only hiccup using this method is we have a one frame delay, meaning that there might be an object that gets destroyed. So you might think of using instance exists, but according to the game maker manual and my testing, this function just won't do it. 
what will happen is your game will crash even though the, the instance doesn't exist. So in this case, we're gonna be using a try catch. Basically, we're gonna try some code and if an error happens, we'll go into the catch and we'll just basically do nothing. Inside the try, we're going to gather the instance, the alarm index, and the alarm value. Then using these three parameters, we'll set the instance alarm according to the alarm index back to the value that it was, therefore resetting that alarm. Now what we can do is just copy and paste and change the code for our speed. We don't need the alarm index anymore, but we do need the value. And instead of setting the alarm, we'll set the instance.speed back to the value. Now let's run our game one more time and let's run around and then pause our game and you can see that everything stops moving and then when I unpause the game, everything goes back to normal. Hopefully you can see the benefit of using a pause system like this as it gives you, the developer, more control over what's happening in your game. Happy coding and a huge shout out to my members on Patreon in no particular order. Mika, Matthew, Midnight, Anton, Bear, Game Maker Community, Victor, and Ashby. Once again, thank you all for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content, just hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the like too. I'll see you in the next video.